Извини. Alright, this is what happens when you procrastinate and you don't have a building to store stuff in. All right, we have the Polaris Ranger 570 in the garage here. So I've been putting this project off for a while. Um, this thing needs a full rebuild. I picked this thing up for $2,700. The owner said that it sat for like three years. It was his parents' machine. Um, he said he was riding down the road one day and it just shut off, wouldn't start back up. So they parked it for three years and uh, I ended up buying it for $2,700. Brought it back home thinking maybe it was like a valve issue and we found that the valves were actually tight. So we fixed that and it actually started up but then I heard a knocking sound and unfortunately the rod bearing went out. So today we're gonna get the engine out of here and tear that all down and rebuild this thing. So um, right now the engine is bolted into the machine here. There's a couple mounts right here and right here and then this engine should pop out of here. Uh, we got the primary and secondary clutch out here. Um, that was just a bolt. And the secondary pops right off. You don't need any special puller for that. For the primary, you do need a special puller. So here is the puller you're gonna need for the primary. This is what that looks like. You can buy it on, you can buy it on eBay or Amazon. Um, just type in Polaris Ranger 570 clutch puller and this will pop right up. I think this was like 40 bucks. Maybe not even, so they're not too expensive. It makes the job a lot easier than pounding it off with a hammer. And uh, this one was stuck on there pretty good, so you know, you probably wouldn't get it off without a puller. So invest in a puller and you can get that off. So let's uh, start digging into this thing. Um, we got the air box off over here and this cover, I was filming it, but my computer deleted all the footage on me. Uh, this just has four bolts and then three over there. So seven bolts in total. They pop right off the engine there and the transmission. And uh, that cover can come right out if you take the air box out. So that's how we got that off. That's underneath, that's behind the clutch. So after that, you can see that the transmission is actually separate from the engine, which is really nice. On most UTVs, the drive shaft right here runs through the engine to the front and to the rear. This one has a separate one for the rear and the front on the transmission, not on the engine. So that means the engine can pop right out without taking any drive shafts off. You don't have to take the transmission out. So it's super nice. Hopefully the transmission's still good in here. 
I don't know because we couldn't test drive it. All right, you can see the engine drop down when the mount here came off, four bolts. Back here, holding on the differentials, different story. Those are not coming out. Get this engine out of the machine here. There we go. was pretty easy. That was way easier than the Odes machine that I owned. Yeah, engine just popped right out and it was super light if you take the top end off. But uh, there's one wire right here that plugs in that we had to take off and one right here for the wiring harness. So make sure you take these off before you take the engine out. Otherwise you'll be wrestling with those wires. But we got the engine out here. Let's start tearing into it. It looks like we'll take the stator cover off first here, and then we'll check the oil and see if there's any chunks in there. Completely gone. I don't know why that happened. So today we're gonna to investigate why that happened too. I don't know if the oil pump went, or if uh, the water pump went. Not too sure. All right, I drained the oil out last video. Let's take the oil filter off here. Maybe I already had this off too. Let this drain for a little bit, see if we see any chunks in there. Any metallic flakes. What's weird is I don't see any metallic flakes. So either the filter wasn't doing its job or maybe it was replaced after, I'm not sure. But yeah, not really seeing any metallic flakes on the filter at all. Very, very odd. All right, we can take the crank position sensor off, which is right here. Get that off of there. Looks good. All right, now, I think this cam chain's stuck in here. Let's see if I can get that out. But if I remember last video, I think we tested the water pump and that was good. So we kind of figured it was gonna be the oil pump, which we'll check. This is reverse thread, so it should come off that way. And it tells you right on here. It says, Tighten with an arrow, so you can't really mess that up. All right, now this cover can come off. And I actually had this cover off before. But uh, my computer deleted all my footage, so now I have to redo it. This one's actually kind of hard to get off. The magnet is super strong. 
So just take your time getting it off here. Kind of grabbing by the oil dipstick. There you go. Oh. There we go. So that's what the stator looks like. And that actually goes into the flywheel. That's why it's so hard to get off. But uh, you want to check your windings here. Make sure there's no wires that are broken. And you can see everything looks really good, nice and sealed. So everything looks great. And here's the water pump right here. You can see that spins. And that attaches right into the crank. So you want to see if it's actually spinning the bolt. And it is. And I can't uh, spin it without spinning this. So we know that the water pump is working. So now, in here, when I first took this cover off, this is the chain that was in here and the two sprockets. So one sprocket went right here, underneath there, and one went right here, the smaller one. And uh, this chain was extremely loose. And this is what uh, moves the oil pump. So this chain is just junk. It's all stretched out. So we're gonna replace the chain. But these were just a couple bolts holding these sprockets on. I couldn't fish them back in for the video I tried. <laughs> so let's get the flywheel off first. This one also takes a special puller. I believe this is a 50 millimeter. So here is the puller for the flywheel. It's kind of Get this on, let's see if it's reverse thread. Yep. And we're probably gonna wanna take the little starter gear like that. So the smaller sprocket goes on the inside. forgot so in here there's actually a little jet so this is a 530 seconds Allen and a lot of times the new cranks don't come with these already installed so you want to save it And you can see that was clear. That's what's in there. So. Before you start pounding on the crank right here to get the crank out, which we're gonna have to do soon, um, take that little jet out and save that. All right, let's see if we can get this thing off. Let's see, we're gonna do reverse here. Take it off. That is on there.
right, breaker bar. We finally got this flywheel off. Oh my gosh, that took probably like, had to have been my whole weight. So probably right around 300 pounds of force to get that off, I would think. But finally got it. I had to cut part of the crank off so that the bolt would go in further. So obviously the crank is junk, but that was junk anyway, so. Yeah, the flywheel is saved though, so that's good. The flywheel puller didn't strip out completely. It did a little bit, but not horribly. So yeah, that's that's out. That uh, that took a lot of force to get that off. All right, we've got the skewer coming off. Now we can get the cam chain guides out. This one can pull through the top like that. And then this one. Same thing, can just pull through the top. Put those off to the side. That holds the cam chain in place so it doesn't go off that crank right there. So cam chain's out. Now the oil pump is right down here. Check that out. Let's see if we can pull that out of there. See how it's kind of loose in there, but I want to come out. There we go. All right, you can see there's a pin in here. There's a washer behind that. The pin isn't broken. Let's see what the oil pump looks like here. You want to replace it if you see any wear, but I'm not seeing anything. Everything looks really good. But for sure that would be the culprit. It does not look like it, but it could have been the chain that was super loose on here. So, let's flip these cases. There are two in here, one right here, one right here hidden. There's a lot of these. All right, those are all out. A little filter underneath there. Put that on. So you can see this is just what that looks like and that can peel up. You can check and see if that's dirty. See, it's just like a little tab like that. Kind of like a little reed. So that all looks good. Do is just knock right here with the hammer, and knock right here, and it should come loose. So let's see what happens. All the bolts are out, double check.
still some oil in there. Got that case half there. Yeah, there's some metal shavings down there. Probably collected into there. Let's just check out this bearing here quick. Bearing feels good. This bearing's probably shot. We'll have to press one of those in. Alright, we actually have a lot of oil left in here. Bunch of metal shavings. <laughs> Look at all those. So that's all from the rod bearing. up just lined up correctly yep you can see the two dots right here two dots right here on either side and then a dot in the middle so that's how you line that up and I think it lines up perfectly with these two dots as well but uh, you can pull this out that bearing feels good it's super smooth counterbalance looks good no teeth off of there. That looks perfect. The only thing in here is a crank and the counterbalance gear. So it's it's very simple. Um, this crank is not going to pound out of here. We're going to have to press that out or just go to town with a hammer and try to get that out but it doesn't just slide out like a normal crank. Um, let's drain out this oil first. Get this going. So many chunks were in there. Let's see. Yeah bunch of chunks. All right, let's take a look at our filter here. Oh yeah, a chunk just flew out of it. So you can see the screen here has a couple chunks in there. Oh, it's packed full actually. Bunch of metal in here. So it's all packed full in there. So at least it caught a lot of the metal. All right, we're over at the press. Let's see if we can pop this crank out of here. Yeah, it's coming right up. Now these are just regular roller bearings in here. I think I can go all the way through actually with that. Let's see, maybe I'll punch it through with this. So a little bit skinnier. Ow. Yelch. 
Pop the crank. Look at that rod bearing. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Not good. Huh. Check this out. I dropped the crank on my finger and my ring bent like that. Look at that. <laughs> so my ring is just crushed. I don't know how I'm going to get that off now. Jeez. Alright, so these bearings feel pretty decent actually. But uh, we're obviously going to replace them. So let's pop this seal out. Alright, the seal was not coming out. I had to pound it from the other side to get that to come out. So you can see that's really hardened up and it is actually metal in there. So it's a metal seal. Now there's actually a clip in here holding in the bearing. You can see right there. A little C-clip we have to get out. Strong C clip right there. That came out. Now well, we can press these bearings out, hopefully. Those were locked, tied it in. One bearing is out. There's a spacer in there too. So here is the bearing set that was in there. Bearing spacer. It fits right on the bearing like that. And then another bearing. So that's what gets pressed into there. And you press them. So you put the C-clip in right there. And you press them to the C-clip. So that's kind of how you know where to stop. This is the crank bearing for the other side with a little hole in it for the oil passage. We're gonna try to push these out. Um, my bearing pushing tool looks like it's either too big or too small. So, all right, this is kind of sketchy, but we're using a socket on there. It looks like it's working. And that's the bearing that came out. As so you can see the hole, when we reinstall it, the new one, has to line up with the oil hole. All right, we got all the cases split. Crank is out, so we can order up a new crank. 
Um, all the parts are laid out here, and there's a couple down here as well. We're gonna be working on the head. As you can see, the bolts right here, these Allen bolts were stripped out and uh, seized in place. We're gonna cut those out and see if we can get those out of there. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a little difficult. You can see it broke off a bit right there. And that one is stripped out down there. Break that off now. All right, one off, one to go. That one came off. Should be a little washer. Mm -hmm. Yep, there we go. Alright, now this pipe should slide off of here. Hopefully. There we go. Finally, that's off. So what we can do is thread on some bolts and see if we can crank those off. So you can thread these on. All right, we welded these nuts on these, on these studs coming out. So hopefully we can take a wrench to these nuts and twist these off. <laughs> that one came right out. That was easy. too bad. That one came right out. I was like loose in there. <laughs> oh. This one's coming too. Sweet. Alright, well that was way easier than expected. Both of them are out. So, that worked. That's the first time that worked first try. Usually I have to re-weld these 
like seven different times. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at these valves next. Get these buckets out. So this one says 518 on it. I remember these buckets come with the shims attached already, so you have to buy separate buckets for shimming, which is kind of unfortunate. <laughs> This one's 505. So these are different sizes. And B is the intake we uh we shaved down. This one is a, this one is a 505 as well. And this one was a 495. So we're putting those on a towel over here labeled so we don't mess those up. <laughs> Pin popped right out. It's kind of stuck on there a little bit. And fish the other one out of here. Alright, so this one is going to be towards this one right here. Let's see what this valve looks like. Let's we'll see if they're worn out. Alright, spring. Doesn't look too bad. A little carbon on there, but the valves really don't look that bad. A little carbon buildup down there, but surface doesn't look pitted or anything. Looks pretty good. Oh man, yeah, this one's a little bit worse. Look at all the carbon buildup on there. It's going right through. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. See that? So, it might be worth getting new valves here. Yeah, that's absolutely horrible. And this valve looks like it's like flattened out here. <laughs> absolutely took a pounding, look at this. You can see it's like flattened out in areas. So, that valve is not good. That doesn't look too bad. But there's a lot of carbon buildup on this engine. This intake valve is actually not that bad. Alright, and that intake valve is not that bad either. So actually the intake valves are better than the exhaust valves. Which is very surprising. But uh, this all needs to be cleaned up. You can see the surfaces there. Are a little dirty, but yeah, the exhaust valves were leaking bad. See how silver these look, and how black these look. <laughs> so, yeah, that was leaking really, really bad. Here are the valve seals in here. All right, these valve seals should pull right out of here.
pretty easy to take off. So we'll definitely replace those. All right, so first ring going in, checking the ring gap. And then we'll get the second ring off right away so we can shove that piston in there. There's quite a bit of play in there. It's not horrible, but definitely some play. The ring gap is huge. You can see right here, just massive. The biggest um, setting here, and it's gotta be at least, it's probably double that. And that was uh, 24 thousandths. So it's probably 48 thousandths of an inch, which is way too big. Alright, second ring going in. Let's see if this one's a little bit better. I think this one's worse. Oh, that's really bad. You can see there's a gap right there. That is massive. That's gotta be three times this amount. Yeah, that's probably three or four times the biggest uh, fuel gauge I have. So that's probably like almost 70 thousandths of an inch for that ring gap. So yeah, safe to say we need uh, new rings. All right, so there we have it. Everything is laid out, ready to go for the installation. So all we need is a new crank, a new piston, a new cylinder, which is probably optional. Um, but this is Nicacel, so you really can't hone it. So it's better to get a new one. Um, new rings. I think we're going to get all new valves for it as well. And then new crank bearings right here. And then a new oil uh, chain right here. Oil pump chain. That was a little stretched out. So we can get that whole kit for almost $1,400. So this is the kit I'm thinking about getting. It's Rev6 engine and parts. Um, it looks pretty good. So it says, included is a new standard bore cylinder, upgraded Rev6 molly coated piston, Forge intake valves, forge exhaust valve uh, timing chain, upgraded tensioner, complete gasket kit, oil seal set, oil pump chain, that's nice, HD twin crankshaft, um, ball bearings. So this is going to fit 2012 to 2017 uh, Ranger 570. So um, that looks pretty good. That has everything we need. So I think that's what we're going to get. Um, you could get what, like the Weisco kits, like right here, or hot rods for a little cheaper. They're like 900 bucks. But uh, I don't trust Weisco cranks, and I don't trust hot rods cranks. So we're going with the Rev6 kit. So hopefully that will work. In the next video, we'll get the kit, rebuild it and hopefully be riding this thing. So, hope you guys enjoyed the teardown on this thing. It wore out that rod bearing. And that rod bearing was just toast, so. It definitely got hot at one point. And um, it was either that oil pump chain right here that was stretched and maybe skipping, so it wasn't pumping oil to it. Or maybe it was just from high mileage. I'm not really sure. But it was definitely not the water pump. It was definitely not the thermostat, and um, I don't think it was any of the switches that we checked last video either. The fan was working, everything was working, so I'm thinking once we rebuild this thing with the proper um, oil pump chain, the proper cam chain, and everything, it should be good to go, fingers crossed. So next video, we will do that, get this thing back together, and we'll see if she fires up. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out.